Hey everyone, welcome back to Factor Fictional, the show where we look at the crazy tech and science from your favorite TV shows, movies, books, comic books, and ask, is this possible? And if not, why not? I cannot wait to do this episode with you guys. It's about the crazy weather in Game of Thrones, or Song of Ice and Fire if you're a book purist. So we went down to the new Exploratorium here in San Francisco to talk to some scientists about that very topic. But first, let's take a look at what you guys thought about last week's episode about Gattaca. Emmanuel Isaac on YouTube makes a very profound and true statement. He says, if that happens, we won't be humans because humans are not perfect. Interesting take on that matter. That's kind of deep. And then Levijatan, 1389, I think I'm saying that right, says, being a unique snowflake is overrated. I think human society should evolve in this manner, and why not? It's all part of the same process. We evolved, developed the knowledge, and now we should use it to develop faster. Think about it, not only curing diseases, but also a variety of social problems, feeling inadequate and self-conscious. If everyone was strong, healthy, and beautiful, these problems would be in the past. I'm gonna disagree with you on that one. I think that even if we were all basically clones of each other, we would still have feelings of inadequacy because that's just what being human is all about, right? We always want to strive to the next level. But anyway, I've been so excited about this episode. A Song of Ice and Fire is one of my favorite book series. I love the HBO series Game of Thrones. But one thing that's been nagging people for a long time is what is up with the crazy weather? They always say winter is coming, but why are there longer summers or longer winters? Why does it seem very erratic? Why doesn't it seem to follow a typical Earth-like cycle of seasons. They do have years. Their, their planet revolves around the sun. They have years like anyone else, um, and the weather does change occasionally, but they almost go into these super long ice age style winters for you know up to 10, 26, 30, 40, 50 years, uh, and no one can explain it. Now, George R. R. Martin has said in the past that, yeah, it's a magical civilization, but we want to know if it was ever possible that we could have seasons like Game of Thrones in the real world. So let's find out. We're here at the Exploratorium in San Francisco speaking with Paul Doherty, who is a planetary physicist and also a senior scientist here at the Exploratorium. You sound like the perfect guy to talk to about this. I feel like I am. <laughs> so in, in Game of Thrones, in the world of Westeros and Essos and the continents there, there's very irregular weather patterns. Could, it, could this have to do with the, with the tilt of the planet or the orbit of the planet around its sun? Well, that's what causes the seasons on the Earth. So that's a great idea. But the thing is, this planet is large enough. It, it's more than a couple hundred miles in diameter. And any planet of that size will pull itself into a spherical shape. The gravity will overwhelm the rocks and crush them into a spherical shape. And a spherical shape like that that's spinning is a nice stable gyroscope. Now the tugs from other planets on the Earth do change our orbit slightly, and they do change the orientation of our spin axis, which changes the seasons, but it takes thousands of years. So what would cause something so irregular like this? Because sometimes the, the winters last eight years, or sometimes they last 23 years. There just doesn't really seem to be much rhyme or reason to it. One thing that could cause this on the Game of Thrones world is a volcanic eruption on the far side of the planet. That's interesting because, I mean, we really only know about three continents within this world. So there could be a totally other continent on the other side of the world where it could be very active with, with volcanoes. That's right. And when those volcanoes go off, it could fill the stratosphere with ash and sulfates. And that would cause a long-term depression in temperature, which makes those long winters. I've also read about something called the Milankovitch cycle, um, which sounds like it could potentially be a reason for these seasons to be so irregular. Can you explain that to me a little bit? So the Earth and its orbit about the sun goes around in an orbit, which is pretty circular right now. But with the tugs from the other planets in our solar system, that orbit gets changed into an ellipse at times, in which we're closer to the sun in one part of the year and further away in another part of the year. But it takes thousands, tens of thousands of years to do that. Oh, okay. It just doesn't change in one year. Right. And to make these short-term chaotic weather patterns. Could there be anything like a, like a binary sun, like a binary sun system that would be putting this into effect? So some scientists calculated this. And in fact, when I was at, at MIT in college, I would simulate planets going around binary stars. And here's the thing. So indeed, uh, if you have two stars and a planet, 
a planet can orbit one of those stars really closely in a nice stable orbit for a long time, or the planet can orbit both stars a long way away and be very stable. Or, in order to make uh, a Game of Thrones-like weather pattern change, it can be in between those two stable zones, in a chaotic orbit zone, where the two orbiting stars give the planet a kick and change its orbit in an extreme way. And that could explain it, except that in those unstable orbit regions, it's really hard for life to evolve before that planet gets kicked out of the solar system okay. or smashed into one of the stars. So it's unlikely that the planet would ever have life on it. I'm also aware of a phenomenon called the, the Maunder Minimum, and that has something to do with sunspots and changing the temperatures on the planet, correct? Could that be causing the weird winters? So yeah, another cause for the weird winters would be, what if the sun changed? And if we look once again in the history of the Earth, we find out that between 1645 and about 1715, there were hardly any sunspots. And it was also very cold in that period. The Thames froze over every winter. You could go ice skating down wow. the Thames. And uh, the winters in, in Europe were brutal at that time. So there's some connection between sunspot numbers and the temperatures on the Earth. And this just shows that the sun changes its output in ways that affect the Earth. Well, there are other stars, there are variable stars, but a lot of variable stars are very regular. They mm. brighten up, they dim on a regular basis. But there are some irregularly brightening stars. Our sun seems to be one. So it sounds to me like you're saying that, that seasons like we see in, in Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire are possible. This could potentially happen. I would say absolutely yes, because something like this has already happened on Earth. So I think it's quite likely that we could explain it in terms of a variable star or in terms of volcanic eruptions. Excellent. Well, thank you so much. I think we're going to have to give this one a fact. Yay. <laughs> so yeah, this one seems like it is actually factual, which is pretty cool. Um, though bad if we ended up having a winter that lasted like 20 years. We'd probably all die, um, but that's beside the point. Do you think that we are due for some kind of extended winter? I know the seasons and the weather have been pretty crazy here on planet Earth uh, for you know our entire lives and getting worse progressively. So let me know what you think in the YouTube comments below. Are we going to to have a big winter is coming moment ourselves. And let me know what you want to see on future episodes here on Fact or Fictional. And stay tuned, we're going to be having a live Google Hangout real soon with you guys, scientists, and me, Veronica Belmont. I'll see you later.